and welcome to another episode of Getting Hammered. I'm your host, Mary Catherine Ham. I am on YouTube. We're on YouTube now. You can go see us. I got to put on makeup when I come in here now because we're taking all of our audio products and turn them into video products so that my face has to look nice, which I was really skating by with not doing that for a long time. Vic, my co-host who's sitting right here, how's it going? Hey, fine. I have to wear pants now, too. I know. It's a huge inconvenience. It's tough on both of us. So people who are watching on YouTube are probably now amazed at what we did to the set, what you did. This is all your idea, Mary Catherine. And tell tell the listeners what we have okay. here. Okay. Well, we have a I feel really like this is a showcase. We it is this is actually something you could win on the yeah, prices right, right circa 1967. Yeah, right. Uh this is a vintage RCA Victor. Uh is that oh, right? Is that what it's called? Set. Yeah, television so, set. Yeah, it's an RCA. And uh, I found it on uh, Facebook Market and <laughs> like a crazy person went with my two daughters thinking they would help me load this and then I saw it and was like, "Oh, I should have gotten another adult." So, in true Facebook Market uh, lazy person scam way, I had to call out the husband from the house and be like, can you help me load this? <laughs> uh, but it has wheels, which is... That it was has the, wheels. That's the key. Got it into the car. We got it here. And the whole time I was thinking, is this stupid? Is this a dumb idea? Because it's a large piece of furniture that doesn't work in its original function. But I thought for our vibe, which is yeah. late 70s, early 80s, retro. like, you know, yeah. living room, I felt like it served... The look, and here it is, serving the look. It is a beautiful wood-paneled <laughs> RCA, uh, I believe, with 13 channels. Yes. And, in fact, the dial is at 13 now, so if you turn it on, you can watch The Magic Garden, followed by Mr. Rogers. Also, can you can we hear the dial flipping? Because oh, yeah, it's great. It has a great feel. Oh, sorry. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, uh, when I That'll could, take you back. It does, because uh, when I was... Uh, I have to do it one more time. I can't resist. Uh, wh- when I was a kid... Uh, like obviously three, four years old, we had a television that was a Zenith, mm-hmm. uh, which was the rival to RCA at the time. And in right. fact, Zenith was, I think, the bigger brand uh, at some point. And it was also wood paneled, a dark wood. Uh, and I loved it. And you never thought that the quality of the picture was bad. It just was. It was just yeah, funny. no, it never you occurred to you. Now, you look back on anything from 20 years ago. Have you watched football highlights from yes, the 80s? From it's the like, 80s, how did it's we like, even know what's happening? How did we this? 90s, even like from 20 years ago. Yeah. They're like, wow, I thought it was better back then. And it was, but I don't know, in our minds, you watch TV and it, w- it was terrific. But um, we would watch shows like Candid Camera with Alan Funt on that uh, television. It was, it was really great. Zenith, by the way, um, they were the first to patent the remote control. Oh, look at yeah, that. A little trivia I explained you. to my kids who saw this and were like, how do you what is this thing and i explained to them that you had to change the dial on the tv and you had to walk up every time you oh, want to do it man. we too had a zenith when i was growing really? up but it was smaller scale yeah and it was in a plastic like faux wood box mm-hmm. uh and it would occasionally go negative on you on the uh screen sort of dark ish oh. and you would walk over and hit it bop yeah, it on the top to hit it. and it would change the picture because that's the kind of technology that we were in. I'll tell you what's interesting also. This is like an earlier model, this RCA here in the studio, is uh, our Zenith had another dial for UHF. Look at you. But it, I never got anything Mattis out of that. Madison family living large. Living large. But if you turn it, it just make it was like on a rubber band. It would make this noise. I don't know yeah. what the UHF uh, dial did because it did nothing for it our It didn't TV. find Cinemax. That's what uh, it no, did No, no. We got, we got the cable box later that's plugged in, right? It was a large console plugged in yeah, and the, that's how you could you, you couldn't those do this buttons little, were very tactile too like they clunk, were clunk, because clunk. you can do uh and you could uh, toggle on three different rows of channels depending on what you had and i believe it was the lower channel uh it was b between b and 31 could be a certain channel that if you just dialed it just right you, you just know? got it exactly just, just gotta right. Get it right you gotta toggle it uh I know nothing of what you speak, uh, but now we just stream everything, and this is a lovely vintage it piece is, of furniture. Uh, yes, that, it's, that that's all. I don't know what uh, people would do with this anymore if they could, but it's it's lovely in this studio for for the feel. Uh, you know, oh, I was yeah. going to tell you, my my ten year old who's never really seen anything like this before, we got it into the garage, and she stood in front of it, a little bit like the poltergeist kid, um, sort of dazed, and she goes, "That's beautiful," and I said, "Girl, it is beautiful." <laughs> Yeah, You're right. we gave up. The, we gave up the, the the beauty for functionality, mm-hmm. you know, because now it's just all flat screens and such. Uh, anyway, but otherwise, okay. I'm I'm doing fine. I watched uh, a little bit of uh, ourselves on YouTube to realize I really do have to set up right. It's otherwise, a tough thing. I'm just going to collapse into myself. 
uh, a, a viewer uh, said I look pre-diabetic, and that's about right. <laughs> I think they're pulling your leg. I don't know about that. I'm feeling it. And, uh, I, you know, because I have a doctor's, uh, my annual physical is coming up uh, next week. And a year ago, I told my doctor I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Okay. I am now only 10 pounds away. <laughs> so. Well, you got a week. I think you're... I mean, it's, well, you're gonna, it you, is. Trust me. I'm lightheaded next, already. I'm the just, next YouTube, you'll be wearing a garbage bag and oh, yeah, spitting yeah, no, into like, a cup. Uh, that's exactly yeah. like... Uh, like uh, uh, what's his name from the Silver Linings yeah, playbook? Bradley gotta, Cooper. You just got to drop yeah, that weight. Yeah. Um, How are you? I'm good. Uh, you actually, <laughs> helpfully... Um, put off your physical so that you could come enjoy a lunch I with did. me. I did. We had a lovely lunch the other day. <laughs> it was like, you know what's important? Lunch at the Palm with Mary Catherine. I'm going to put off my physical. Much appreciated. I did um, get a steak salad. Yes, you did, which is kind of a fake out. I'm not sure your body is really reading that differently. But we, we had a lovely lunch at the Palm. It was the eighth anniversary of the uh, death of my husband, Jake. And I always set up an event for myself to have fun on that day because you never know exactly how you're going to feel. And to raise a glass in his honor. And to raise a glass and just like to, to life and uh, yeah. and also to our, our uh, recently departed friend, Terry oh, Eastland. Terry and Eastland. So yeah. We were, we were uh, getting into a lot of things, including several martinis. Um, and Vic, uh, Vic very helpfully One you know, volunteered to make sure that um, he could enjoy that day in yes. a robust manner. And not yes. have to go have his blood drawn the next day. I believe it was. Uh, we're just faking out Vic's doctors over one here. One, yeah, that's all. That's that's the whole game we're playing. One martini, one red wine. But you know, the red wine is res resveratrol. Is that it's what it is? It's good has? for you. It's, it's good, good for, for the you. heart. It's good for you. Anyway, we had a lovely time, and I would say uh, that <clears throat> the Lord blesses me every year by just yeah. saying, like, yes, you're allowed to do this on this day, and I wake up with no hangover, and I don't know how it happens, it's but miraculous. it happens every year. It's miraculous. As I get older and older, um, I'm tired. But I have no hangover. So it was a lovely day with friends. And I would just say to anyone who had, we all have something that's going to be tough in our lives. Um, the anniversary is always going to be an issue. It hits people in different ways. Sometimes they want to surround themselves with friends and family to really uh, get into their feelings. Sometimes they want something fun to distract them. But I do often tell people, plan something for yourself. After it happens, look out for yourself. Know that it's coming up on the calendar. Mm -hmm. The calendar is a real bitch this way. It really it comes around every year. Uh, and so plan something for yourself to make sure that you're in a place where you're going to have a decent day. Yeah. Um, or as good as it can possibly yeah. be. So yeah. anyway, we did that. I hate to bring this up, but I'm just going to mention it in passing, which is we did get, and you tweeted out a very nasty comment uh, that was directed towards you. But, you know... <laughs> People are always going to be nasty. I do want to just mention that I somehow got implicated in the tweet because there was an accusation of some ridiculous, horrible crime that is committed in public, some sort of indecency crime, but it was not a reference to the it show and it was not a reference to me. Honestly, I don't know who it was say. a reference to. Yeah, that's why. But the most important part of this tweet is that it was misinformation. Oh, yeah. But because... It, because it called me flabby armed. Wow. And if there's one thing I am not... It is that. No, you work okay. on this. Yeah. You work on this. Oh it's like somebody called me small-headed. Somebody. somebody <laughs> just be like, how dare you? Somebody put a community note on it. It was like, she's <laughs> obviously yoked. Thank you. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so Good community right. note. We got news. We got news today, Vic. Um, a lot of news. We are your morning show for any hour. Uh, today, I am underprepared and overcaffeinated. I That's strategic. I was coming in that way. Coming in hot, Vic. And we're going to start, speaking of hot, with some local news out of South Carolina. Oh, yeah. This is great. You, you know that when the F-35 was lost and and then we uh, recovered it uh, <laughs> in, the, in the debris field that no one could see, um, look. I am inclined to be healthily skeptical of the government's version of events in these situations. You know who I'm not skeptical of? Mr. Randolph White. Yes. Who heard this crash. Let's let's hear from him. Here he is. He's in a straw hat and I believe overalls um, in South Carolina. And you just can't fake this. Uh, in the bathroom taking a shave. And I heard a, a screeching. Saw that between a screech and a whistle. this and i heard a boom in my whole house show white says he didn't realize it was a plane at the time so he didn't call anybody the crash thought came to me i said well, this must what is a meteorite coming out of space or something and i said well if the airplane it needed to be reported the thing was flying is too low that's a man who can be trusted by the way 
One day we're going to do this when we have a video clip. We're going to go to the TV and it's going to be the fake thing where the screen then takes up the whole uh, screen, the, the TV screen does, and then we play the video as if it comes out of the, Zena, uh, the, the RCA. Oh, the RCA. That would be a great thing. Uh, I would love, uh, I think that would make a great ringtone. His what in the world is screech. This? I'm His gonna screech use... was something else. <laughs> I'm going to use what in the world is this with my children no, every keep, day. I just, just burst into the What in the world is this? He is keeping it real. Look, again, the government, I question. This witness, I no. do not question. Uh, you wonder how fast it was traveling because that noise must have been terrifying. You know, yes. if it's reaching that point of, I don't know if it's terminal velocity I or love if that he's just broken like, the sound barrier and then it hit. I have no he, idea how, if it was a controlled, automated controlled crash or what. Well, it looks like uh, I saw some sort of overhead video. It did look like it had gone through some trees and then landed. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, so it, sure. it cut a path. I do enjoy the idea that um, Mr. Randolph White heard this, thought it might be a meteorite or a UFO. And then, uh, and then was just like, I don't know what it is. So I'm not going to call it. I'm anybody. not going to report that. <laughs> I feel like, None of my business. I like it. Yeah. I like that very yeah. hands off. You approach. imagine? I love how you you know you always you always you get right up to the edge there, Mary Catherine, about the circumstances regarding this crash, and uh, I, I always think to myself, imagine if we had a podcast in the '90s, like when the, the Ron Brown plane went down <laughs> in the quote unquote accident. Okay, sorry. Hey, look, I'm just here for skepticism. Okay, I feel like we have a lot of reason to be skeptical, yeah, yeah. and uh, we'll get into some more reasons for that uh, okay. later in the podcast today. But can we talk about the strikes? Yes. There's so yes. many strikes. It's, 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 it's big. The people are striking. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the UAW. Uh, United Auto Workers is striking. Um, they have uh, requested, among other things, a four-day work week for yeah. the same and more uh, than they were getting paid before. 32 hours. 32-hour work week. Only I do that. Come on. <laughs> There's, they're asking for, for quite a bit. Uh, the big three is who mm -hmm. they're negotiating with. They're negotiating with them all separately. Uh, this has been going on for a little while now. There have now been some layoffs at various factories uh, that those the big three are uh, attributing to the strike. Mm -hmm. UAW is mad about that and saying, no, 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 you can't be laying off workers and blaming mm -hmm. us. But, you know, this is a work stoppage. The, you know, things yeah. happen in a work stoppage. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. What do you think of these requests? Well, from the, the UAW? first the first one is I didn't know what Stellantis was because I was still thinking that Chrysler was still operating as Chrysler. But Stellantis and I thought so Stellantis must be one of these EV makers or something, but no, Stellantis is just the giant umbrella under uh which you have Chrysler and Peugeot and a okay. bunch of other GM uh, is GMC yeah, under yeah, that one? I'm pretty okay. sure. So uh there's that. Uh but I call it the Stellantis. They should just Stellantis. rename the whole thing Ram. Yeah, there you go. Because Rams yeah, are the yeah, it's, it's all part of this. Right, exactly. So uh, this is all uh, driven by the electric vehicle push. This is what the whole problem is. And I think that the automakers are finding themselves in a similar situation to like, I don't know, horse and buggy makers, what's going to happen to us. Because the problem is there's an incongruence in the assembly of combustion engine cars. Right. And electric vehicles. It requires it, more hands-on, yeah, more yeah. Uh, human help. Yeah, more humans and probably yeah. more of those robot arms. Yeah. You know, but uh, the uh, the electric vehicles, it takes fewer people. So what happens to everybody else? And I well, think that you, so well, UAW wants everyone, not just the people who are going to be actually needed, but, you know, if it takes, you know, a, a, a few dozen less, a few people, everyone they want covered. Yeah. By well, and among... One of the problems is among the most successful yeah. EV makers, Elon Musk, oh, yeah. does it without unions, exactly. does it with fewer people, mm -hmm. does it with, we must note, giant government subsidies. Yeah. And sure. that's part of the issue here, too, is you say horse and buggy, except presumably people did want to move from horse and buggy. Right. To gas powered that's vehicles because was it was say. an improvement. Right. That's the that's the big the big difference is. They're not going to get every American yeah. to start hit to start driving electric vehicles no, the, at this current rate. In some states like California, they want it done by 2032, 2035. No, and the and the problem becomes again, you need fewer people to build those kind of cars. Also, not that many people are super passionate about those kind of cars. There are people who are, and I'm happy for them to buy them. But the distortion of the market is pretty intense because mm -hmm. of the government subsidies yeah. for electric vehicles. Obviously, that's concentrated in certain places in urban areas. 
uh, the market distortion will become even worse because a giant state like California, where we yeah. have to export all their crappy policy all over the U.S., is going to mean yeah. that the manufacturers need to make EVs. They need to do this kind of work, but it's all being propped up. It's not yeah. It's not organic. It's going to be plenty of distortions. Well, and as a so, result, yeah. cheaper gas-powered vehicles for which you can use to mm -hmm. go on road trips, for instance, right. without having an entire staff lay out mm -hmm. your plan for charging. Um, and you can use in rural areas or like the used car market and all of these things that have sort of been hugely distorted for the past three years so that such that working class people are having a lot of trouble getting just regular cars to right. drive. It's going to get worse. Right. Because, you know, a lot of these vehicles are what even even if you get the rebate, it's like, I don't know, at least sixty thousand dollars for some of these vehicles. Right. Uh by the, the way, the, uh, Elon Musk's yeah. uh, price tags coming way down okay. in the recent years. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing more and more Teslas on the road, that's for sure, at least yeah. around here. Uh, Stellantis, I pronounce it, I guess, if you're from Jersey, you're going to say Stellantis. Stellantis. Uh, but it might be Stellantis, I don't know. Uh, Surely it can't be Stellantis. They were offering a 21 They don't even count as domestic auto workers no, anymore. I don't know they call what it the, Stellantis. I, yeah, I, know. I mean, Peugeot's in there. Uh, they were offering a 21% uh, uh a raise over a pay hike over uh, the next four years, but the UAW demand is thirty six percent, like nine percent year over year for the next four years, or something to that effect, which puts the average uh, worker uh, anywhere between I think one hundred thirty and one hundred fifty dollars an hour, whereas uh, Toyota workers I think is fifty dollars an hour, right, and, right. Uh, and as you mentioned, Tesla's non union that's forty five. Yeah, so competition is not the incentive here and of course when you have the government as you mentioned involved well and it's all it's all this yeah. like vicious cycle so barack obama tweeted about it first of all look unions have uh demands all the time that mm -hmm. are probably not going to get done right these strike me as particularly uh oh they want pensions reinstated oh yes too. that's exactly like, right what century are we living Old school in pensions instead of the 401ks uh right. which which are matched up to like six, seven yeah. percent or something. No argument there. Pensions are a lot better. I just want to say this: uh, News Corporation. Speaking of which, because Rupert Murdoch just announced he's stepping down. Uh, when uh, do you have one left over from News from Corp? The Is that what Standard. you're talking about? When I started at the Weekly Standard, <laughs> they still had pensions. Yeah. And so I kept it for a while, and then the pension program ended. I think when they acquired the Wall Street Journal around that time, okay. uh, and then we were forced to either. Um, Stay as a pension, but you're only going to collect whatever the amount is in there now when you turn 60 or 65. Okay. Now, some of our colleagues, whom we know, they easily were like, yeah, okay, I'll keep the pension because they are old. O older, I should say. Yes. yes. Uh, but not me at the time. So everybody else uh, had to roll it over into a 401k, uh... which, by the way, is funny because now it's Disney. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, there has been a shift in almost everyone's retirement plans from- yeah. Just use the terminology defined benefit, which is the pension that says you're right. getting this no matter what, to defined contribution, which is your employer will help you match. Yeah. Um, you get chip you in. certainly get a deal there, but it's not exactly like the pension deal was. Right. But it's also just unsustainable. Yeah. For a manufacturer to do that, so it's you're asking for something that will bleed these companies dry. Right. Uh, and will lead to losses in the future. I enjoyed uh, Barack Obama's tweet about this 14 years ago. When the big three automakers were struggling to stay afloat, my administration and the American people stepped in to support them. So did the auto workers in the UAW who sacrificed pay and benefits to help get the companies back on their feet. Now that our car makers are enjoying ro robust profits, it's time to do right by those same workers so the industry can emerge more united and competitive than ever. It will not emerge more united and more competitive than ever. What will happen is you just restart the cycle, which is if you give these benefits, the big three will lose profitability again, yeah. at which point Barack Obama and others in the Biden administration will be like, we must bail them out Come again. Come to the rescue. It's, um, it's a cycle. And we're just going to keep yeah, doing that. That's right. It's, it's, it, and it's, again, worth considering that the, the big three, I think only 3% of their car production is electric vehicle at the moment. Yeah. So that's kind of uh, a problem. Get ready for the distortions, yeah. my friend. But it, and, it's going to be and, real. And, and this is all part of, you know, I mean, you, you think about the overall uh, push through the in, in, the Inflation Reduction Act, which mm -hmm. was the most amazing climate change bill yes. ever. That's why yes. they called it Inflation Reduction. 
uh, it's really putting the economy, uh, the, the resiliency of the economy to the test. And I was thinking about also just tangentially uh, Biden at the United Nations talking about wanting to climate proof America. What does that mean? Climate proof it? Oh. Like gi- build a giant dome. I don't know, man. So I don't know. Maybe it's we not will. Good. Hey, they built that thing out in Vegas that's like a big sphere with the eyeballs that you can protect. Oh. Maybe he wants to do that. For all of us, it'll be climate proof. We'll have to check it out. We're going to live in the Vegas eyeball yes. sphere. Well, I think it's getting gonna... hammered investigates <laughs> in Vegas. That'll in Vegas. go well. Oh yeah. Okie doke. There's another strike. Yeah. Basically, all of Hollywood is on strike, um, except for a couple of brave souls who dipped a toe in the water of maybe going back to work, and like then Drew were, Barrymore were immediately spanked of? for that. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, a writer strike uh, in Hollywood, and Drew Barrymore attempted to. Uh, announced that she would come back for her talk show. Look, a talk show can theoretically ar- uh, operate without a ton of writers. And right? Gutfeld does. You can do yeah. interviews. You can rely on people's wit and charm to carry you through without the writing necessarily. And so she was promising to do that. She, as well as Bill Maher, another person who said he might come back. They just have to write in their own voice, which is really tricky. Right. I think that's it. They, he said he would come back, and both of them referenced, look, there's a lot of people who work on our show who are out of work during this time, right? So the writers strike, but there are lighting guys who are getting no paycheck sure. because there's no work to do. So I do, I am sympathetic to that because those guys, they aren't part of your union, and yet you are bullying them into taking no paycheck yeah. during the length of this strike, right? So these two folks say that they're coming back. <laughs> Drew Barrymore uh, immediately capitulated and apologized yeah. uh, in sort of like embarrassing uh, Instagram selfie oh, yeah. uh, in, format. In, in fact, she lost a, a, her a gig, I believe, as the MC for the National Book Award or something. To yes, that yes. Well, because because when like someone that. makes a decision that you don't agree with, you must crush the yes, rest of their right. career. That's right. Forever. Yeah. That's that's what you must do um, for solidarity. And uh, so people came at her really hard. Bill Maher, who doesn't care as much what other people think, said he was coming back. They also came at him. And he eventually just said, and I like, who knows what was behind this, but he didn't do the apology no. uh, version. I imagine he, he just said, have. look, it looked like there was no end in sight, but now it looks like there might be an end in sight. And so therefore, hold we'll hold off and see if they come to an agreement. Yeah. Well, it does look like there might be an end in sight. Writers and producers are near an agreement. This is CNBC reporting. To end the Writers Guild of America strike after meeting face to face on Wednesday, uh, people close to the negotiations told CNBC uh, there's a chance that uh, by the time you hear this, they will have come to an agreement. I do have to say, I, I think that the the Writers Guild is dealing with some more, uh, what am I trying to say, technology driven, sure. interesting issues yeah. Yeah. with AI uh, than the UAW is, which is right. sort of the same asks that they've been making mm-hmm. forever. Uh, I un- I'm more sympathetic with them being concerned about what this looks right. like in the future. The electric vehicle push is being foisted on uh, the car makers, whereas this is uh, the technology is here. It's happening, and there are all sorts of ramifications. And at the moment, sort of a lack of implications uh, when it comes to uh, you mentioned AI. I was going to mention streaming yeah. and streaming rights. Right. So uh, in the olden days. Uh, a lot of you and know. Not everybody can just give it away for free like we do. Uh, no, you know. Please, uh, actors and Jenny yeah, Hammer podcast on YouTube. We are we are very we're we're benevolent that way, you know. But uh, a lot of actors, for example, you know, TBS would shell out for actors and writers, everybody for Seinfeld. Right. Right. Uh, I saw uh, Aaron Paul, who plays Jesse Pickman in Breaking Bad. He had joined the strike line. He was in the pickets. He yes. joined the picket line, and he said that he had heard that. Um, Breaking Bad was, uh, again, uh, trending. And, uh, of course, it's on Netflix, and that's where I watched it and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, but he says he's not getting anything from that. Oh, interesting. Which is really interesting. So, I mean, so that, that that's that's what he says. Uh, and my question to you, Mary Catherine, was, is, is the strike affecting you, though, as a viewer? Because it's not affecting me as a viewer because I don't really watch that much TV. So... Uh, not a ton because I don't watch a lot of the. I don't watch late night no. comedy, which right. is sort of comedy, sort of a loose, a generous term for what they're doing yeah. these days. Um, but they've been on strike for a hundred days. There's things that are shut down. Um, Stranger Things, 
uh, Marvel's Blade. There's things that perhaps you might I, yes, be looking I, forward I to. I noticed that in the article. Marvel's Blade and Paramount's Evil. I have no idea what's going on I there. I think Blade is. is a vampire, but uh, yeah. Evil, I, no interest. And as you were mentioning, it's not like I'm dying. To, it's not like I'm really missing Stephen Colbert's monologue. No, and here's the thing. Is that while this happened, football season started. Yeah. Okay. So a bunch Which of people- unaffected by. So a bunch of people can watch that because the NFL writers are not on strike. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're working on their scripts diligently, right? Um, including the the Aaron Rodgers energy that uh, uh, injury that that real plot yeah. twist for us. And by the and and, and uh, as we now know, uh, with the NFL, and if you throw in college football, it's what Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Oh yeah, yeah. all the days. Is, yeah, yeah, practically. Pretty much, that's going to be the entire lineup of all. Does college TV does college football point. play also uh, outside of uh, Saturday? Sometimes Thursdays. Thursdays yes. as well. Yeah. It may have expanded beyond that at this point. Yeah. Uh, just keep, there's a lot of football creep. Yeah. Which I endorse. Tuesday would be a good slot. I'm fine with it. Um, Just beyond higher compensation, the WGA has been pushing for new rules similar to the UAW, Mm -hmm. which would require studios to staff TV shows with a certain number of writers for a certain period. The writers are also seeking compensation throughout the process of pre-production, production, production, and post-production. As of now, writers are often expected to provide revisions or come up with new material without being paid. Um, So they are at work on that agreement. So I guess we'll have monologues maybe soon. Can't wait. I can't wait for New Amsterdam to come back on NBC. Oh, wait a minute. They canceled it. Thank God. New Amsterdam. That would be the worst show ever. Did we ever discuss well, that? You feel so strongly about oh, it. Oh, I didn't even. I know. And and, and then uh, my former colleague Brent Scher accused me of actually watching New Amsterdam, which I don't. But oh, wait, the, the famous Amsterdam... episode about Roe v. Wade. And you thought it was 9-11. We thought, oh, my gosh, there was a terrorist attack. And that's why everybody is so sad. That... Oh, no. It's a, a hospital upset about Roe v. Wade. A hospital staff. It's amazing when it comes. It's amazing, to, you know, in terms of the echo chamber. It's no, amazing. just like the the ham handed, yeah. hitting you over the yeah. head with yeah. a social issue. It is perhaps unmatched. I mean, that moment is yeah. astounding. And the whole episode is really quite something. Not that I watched the whole episode. Oh, you I'm totally like, watched. She was a dedicated it's, viewer. It's a, yeah, dedicated okay. viewer of that hospital. Oh. All right. Um, there's some news from the Department of Homeland Security. Oh. Uh, they have a new expert group, uh, an expert group that's going to deal with uh, issues like terrorism, fentanyl, transborder issues, okay. and emerging technology. By the way, can we not talk, call it transborder issues? I, I feel like we're going down a path here. Um, the, the two are now merging. Yeah, border security. Let's talk about it that way, perhaps. Uh, DHS claims the panel will advise on these issues, uh, but here's the thing. Yeah, who's on the group? Who's in the panel? Well, let me tell you about who's on there. Our faves, Clapper and Brennan. Oh, back at it, back at it on an expert group. Here's redeemed, the thing. and redeemed. one one other person too who Paul had a, who had a part in the um in yeah. the letter about yeah. Hunter Biden's laptop where they said uh, that it looked like Russian disinformation. Mm-hmm. Um, they have of course sort of gaslit everybody and said no 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 that's not what we meant. It's obviously what they meant. So many intelligence officers signed this thing yeah. um, to say that a real thing was not real. Yeah. Some would call that misinformation. They've also misinformed Congress on several occasions. What I would like is that there should just be a baseline of if you have lied to Congress about intelligence, you should not be on the expert panel on intelligence. In addition to that, not owning up to it and uh, having zero accountability. So it's not yep. like, you know what? It turned out we were wrong about that laptop. They never said that. And of course, they said that we were misconstrued and they blamed it on Politico and the Politico headline uh, saying that they they say that uh, the Hunter Biden's laptop uh, was Russian uh, disinformation. Uh, But again, it has now since come out uh, that folks like Brennan and Clapper, I believe, they went there. They they had this discussion with uh, Antony Blinken, uh, who is now our current secretary of state, uh, talking about how they can help Biden. By doing this and putting this letter together. Oh, good so, stuff. Good stuff, guys. Spare me. I mean, well, I don't know why they just don't call the. I mean, again, my has had a previous foray into creating an, at Homeland Security another panel, and that was the disinformation panel with Nina Jankowitz. Right. They should uh, just put it all into can one. We just giant, bring her back. Let's bring her back. The much they maligned. Need one giant Ministry of Information or Ministry of uh, in, in, Interior Ministry. Yeah, mini- Ministry, ministry of uh-huh. Truth. Yes. Uh-huh. We could call yeah. it. Um, Clapper also uh, in 2013 um, 
lied to Congress and said uh, that there was no sort of dragnetting of American uh, citizens' data when, in fact, there was. He has since said, I didn't lie. I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, that's a great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, way to put it. Brennan, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, lied to the Senate telling them that no intelligence agencies had gotten into their staff computers when, in fact, intelligence agencies yeah. were getting into so how about that? computers. So I'm just saying, like, I know I know that because they were on the right side of Trump and hated him just enough. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they do. Yeah. And they can just lecture all of us about honesty yeah, while constantly lying. Eyes. Uh, but I'd, I'd prefer that we not have the disinformation unit or intelligence unit led by the disinformation yeah. guys. I mean, uh, no question. We need to figure out how to stop this this fentanyl crisis and the border issues. We've been saying it for quite some time over here. But having them overseeing it, uh, that's question. No, thank you. Okay. Speaking of folks, uh, I'll just say, I'll be generous and say answering to Congress. Oh, yes. Merrick Garland was on the Hill uh, talking about a lot of stuff. And it, it, he covers a lot of ground, and we're not going to go over all of it. You'll never hear me. You'll only hear me say this once, which is to his credit. And I'll say to his credit, he was there the whole day. <laughs> it was exhausting. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, it was a long grilling. Well, there's a lot going on yeah. at the old DOJ, right? So I'll play just a little bit because it seems like this is sort of the bare minimum. Like he should be able to answer this question. Yeah. This is a question about the Hunter Biden investigation. Okay. And whether he was in contact with those conducting that investigation. Okay. Have you had personal contact with anyone at FBI headquarters about the Hunter Biden investigation? Uh, I don't don't recollect the answer to that question, but the FBI works for the Justice Department. It's. uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't recollect. You don't recollect whether you've talked with anybody at FBI headquarters about an investigation of the president's son? I, I don't believe that I did. I promised the Senate when I came um, before it for confirmation that I would leave Mr. Weiss in place and that I would not interfere with his investigation. Okay, did I you ever... Kept, I have kept that promise. All right. That doesn't really sound like a real answer. Yikes. By the way, when you played that, I just, out of my reflex, was to turn to the giant TV here. Because I figured that Jennifer will add the effect later for the show. Uh, Yes, it is a very interesting formulation. And it did take him a couple of seconds to figure out how can I not say yes or no flat out without either being honest or perjuring myself. It just seems like you'd want to say no No. if that were the answer. And instead, it was a rather roundabout way. But then once he stuck to that formulation that you just heard, he sticks to that for the rest of the uh, session. He doesn't veer from that at all. He also was asked about uh, the father who we've spoken about on this podcast, uh, Scott Smith, who was just pardoned by the governor of Virginia. This gets a little complicated, but he was arrested at a school board meeting for getting angry at the school board, essentially, and they called it disorderly or whatever he was arrested on. For dismissing allegations that his daughter The school board had been hiding his daughter's very serious uh, sexual assault in a school bathroom uh, for political reasons and to hide their own Which misconduct. No longer allegations. Uh, we now know all of this because yeah. Youngkin became governor and it was investigated and right. a bunch of people got in trouble for it. Smith was doing the right thing. He was standing up for his kid. These public servants were not serving him. They were yeah. covering up all this information. Nonetheless, Smith was used as pretty much the main example for the National School Board Association to send a letter yeah. to the Biden administration in 2021 that said, look, you guys uh, and federal law enforcement really need to figure out what to do about all these uh, possible, I forget the exact phrasing, but they did use terrorism, domestic right. terrorism oh, as yeah. a frame for this. Um, all these parents uh, who were going to imply are domestic terrorists coming at school boards. They wanted the FBI to monitor them. So what happened is it went to the DOJ. That letter did. And uh, Garland, not using the same terminology, but used that letter as a basis to send a memo right. to the FBI to say, this is something we need to look out for. On its face to me, that's a problem. Um, So he's asked a little bit about, hey, since now we know that this guy uh, didn't do anything wrong, actually, and he's been pardoned, um, can you speak to that a little bit? And it turns out, no, he can't. I thank the Attorney General for being here before us today. On October 21st, 2021, before this committee, I ask you about Mr. Scott Smith. 
a father in Loudoun County, Virginia, who was arrested at a school board meeting where he questioned the rape of his daughter in a bathroom in the public school there. You said at the time you were unfamiliar with the case. Are you now, yes or no? I'm only familiar to the extent I've read about it in the press. Maybe look it up, dude. Maybe look it up. Maybe ask some questions. You sent a memo on October 4th, 2021, directing the FBI and U.S. Attorney offices to address, quote, harassment, end quote, of school boards. Yes or no? I sent a memo to address violence and threats of violence in connection with school personnel. Directed at school boards. Not directed at school boards, directed at school personnel, school administrators. For throughout the country members. as a priority for the federal government, for the United States Attorney's Office. That followed a letter on September 29th, 2021 from the National School Board Association to President Biden and emails from the National School Board Association Director Chip Slavin to the White House in which the White House asked for specific threats. And one of the examples was Scott Smith. Which wasn't real, right? This seems like a problem. He goes on for a couple minutes and then asks him at the end, has that memo been rescinded, given what we now yeah. know? Well, first of all, he claims not to know anything about Smith. Uh, and two, although he generously concedes that it's the governor's power to pardon him. Number two, uh, it hasn't been rescinded. It's just out there still. And like, who knows what powers are being used for this directive? I don't know. That's comforting. The uh, Every now and then I, I, I think to myself, would he have been better or worse in the capacity of Supreme Court justice versus attorney general. He was also asked about January 6th and uh, how many informants oh, right. or FBI folks might uh -huh. have been in that crowd. He wouldn't answer that, couldn't answer that. Um, and then he was also asked about the, uh, the real lopsided enforcement of face laws, which is this law yes. uh, that a lot of pro-lifers keep getting picked up on for allegedly blocking the entrances right. uh, to abortion clinics. Uh, this law can apply to other people too. But yeah. interestingly, the numbers are like 150, 160 pro-life to four yeah. when it comes to yeah. things that are and prosecuted they're get, And they're or getting the book followed. thrown at them, Yes, uh, particularly at these abortion clinics. Uh, it, it, it's really quite disturbing. So. Yeah, it seems like maybe that that uneven number doesn't just happen does organically. Not, but Garland does not have, I think, enough self-respect to resign, right? There's, none of this embarrasses him. The only person who I think has been really forced to leave was Susan Rice, you know, but that's a right. whole other related thing. Well, they're, they're about probably the trying to force out all these whistleblowers at some point. Um, yeah, those guys. Well, that's gone. true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, but I, again, this is... Every agency is dealing with this precipitous loss in public trust, mm -hmm. and they all seem just determined to exacerbate yeah. it, yeah. not to work on it. Yeah. Um, and perhaps that's because they don't believe their just job description it out, includes you know? yeah. gaining trust of all Americans. No. Because they're interested in punishing some they Americans like and not others. being in this position. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great, Vic. No, it's not. Um, it could be worse, though. Oh, have uh remember Jacinda? I was about to do it, my New Zealand accent, but I don't really have one. <laughs> They're very hard to do. Is that, is, is that the Prime Minister from New Zealand? No, I don't know. I'll tell you what, but it's Australian actually, which is uh our friend Mike Warren mm -hmm. used to say uh how to say razor blades. Oh yeah. Oh, I know you, this trick. Uh, go ahead. Show us. Show <laughs> us Aussie. Thunder. Show us uh uh, uh no. Matilda. Yes. <laughs> if you say if you say, rise up lights quickly, that is razor blades in an Australian accent. Rise up lights. Isn't that great? Oh, rise up lights. Try that at home. <laughs> but we don't have Not a trick. Not while you're driving. We don't have a trick for the Kiwis, and we're talking no, about the Kiwis. I, I don't, I don't. No, uh, I don't have the My Kiwis. only trick yeah, for the Kiwis is Maoris. to sing, sing Flight of the Concord songs. Oh, yes, that's, that's right. That's the only way that's I right. can do that. Right. Um so, so, Jacinda Ardern, what yeah, happened? Yeah, yeah, back to the UN. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's happening. The United Nations. Is it the United Nations? This, by the way, if we were giving speeches at the United Nations, this is what it would look like. It would yeah. be amazing. Uh, former New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern uh, talked about uh, free speech. Oh, good. At the UN. Yeah, and I'm how sure important she had, it is. I'm sure she had some good stuff to say. Uh, Jacinda, uh, Prime Minister Jacinda was uh, sort of number one on the uh, really heavy handed to the point of dictatorial uh, COVID regulations. Yeah. And she yeah. was so proud of herself and everyone was so proud of her, except, you know, COVID zero never happened because it can't. It can't. Uh, but she no. did take a lot of people's liberties away. So let's hear a little bit from her. 
This week, we launched an initiative alongside companies and nonprofits to help improve research and understanding of how a person's online experiences are curated by automated processes. This will also be important in understanding more about mis- and disinformation online, a challenge that we must, as leaders, address. Sadly, I think it's easy to dismiss this problem as one in the margins. I can certainly understand the desire to leave it to someone else. Anyone else. Literally anyone else, Jacinda. As leaders, we're rightly concerned that even the most light-touch approaches to disinformation could be misinterpreted as being hostile to the values of free speech that we value so highly. It's funny to hear her talk about a light touch. She's yeah. like, grab the grandmas and throw them in jail if they're out in the, like, no. Middle right. Earth without a mask on. Anything that is not the truth. But how do you determine the truth? In the words of, in the, is that the words of Pontius Pilate, what is truth, you know? So, uh, the, the, uh, yeah. She can... They will determine that. That's the good thing is that's what government's there for, to tell you what is true. And if the truth changes, then the tr truth changes. Just watch out for anyone who says free speech that we love, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. But while I cannot tell you today what the answer is to this challenge, I can say with complete certainty that we cannot ignore it. To do so poses an equal threat to the norms we all value. After all, how do you successfully end a war if people are led to believe the reason for its existence is not only legal, but noble? How do you tackle climate change if people do not believe it exists? How do you ensure the human rights of others are upheld when they are subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology? The weapons may be different, but the goals of those who perpetuate them is often the same, to cause chaos and reduce the ability of others to defend themselves to disband communities, to collapse the collective strength of countries who work together. But we have an opportunity here to ensure that these particular weapons of war do not become an established part of warfare. The weapon of war she's talking about is people talking. Yes, the limitations just, on free speech. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's the, the weapon of war is you talking. Please. In these times, I'm acutely aware of how easy it is to feel disheartened. We are facing many battles on many fronts. But there is cause for optimism, because for every new weapon we face, there is a new tool to overcome it. That's censorship. The weapon is the speaking. Yeah. The tool to overcome it is yeah. the censorship. She's tackling the threats over here. Uh, yeah. Oh, she's, is there more? Uh, oh, please, you're killing me here. For every attempt to push the world into chaos, is a collective conviction to bring us back to order. We have the means. We just need the collective will. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, that's the threat right there. Yeah, yeah no. That's the threat, I, let me not tell you me. Something. I'm her, not the threat. I'll tell you, it's, her speech is what has me disheartened. It is a charming accent. It is. The, uh, the totalitarianism is. in that accent now, actually that's sounds not pretty a knife. nice. That's a knife. Oh, sorry, that's Crocodile Dundee. I get confused. It's also sorry. Australian. Also, They're going to get mad at you. I'm getting mixed up. Okay. They're going to get mad. Yeah. Wow. The, yeah, watch out for that, guys. It is, once again, and people have talked about it, so this is not my original idea, but the left in the 60s and the 70s being so suspicious and wary of big government, mm -hmm. now embracing big government because they are big government. Yes. I mean, that's that's the theme, Just right? Trust is us. That, is that trust us. We'll let you know what is true and what is not true. She and the government and the, yeah. the collective of all governments yeah. no matter the sort of the moral standing or the values of those governments yeah. by the way there's we all know who's at the un they are the bulwark against chaos yeah. whereas people with thoughts mm -hmm. are the threat <laughs> thank you the uh, uh i'm sure the russians the iranians and the chinese must have loved that speech i mean they're like yes we we yeah. can, we, we can stop. agree we with this. We do have the tools for yes. this. We've been using we, we, them for yeah, quite yeah, some time. Chinese can we show you how to use them? Yeah. And she's like, no, actually, I have it pretty under control yeah. in uh, my does. tiny island nation that I've been I, I hope oppressing I, for several I, years. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to uh, find out. But uh, how is the speech received at the assembly with like tepid applause or standing ovation? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. You know. What? But uh, she's getting. Uh, she's getting. I guess on social media, people are a little oh, bit worked up. People love her. 
We've Certain always people, loved yeah, her. Yeah, why people. why yeah. can't yeah. our leaders be, be as like effective that. Yeah. Yeah. as Jacinda? Yeah. Effective no. as Jacinda. You know, by the time we're... You joke about this, Mary Catherine. By the time we're done with this episode, you'll be full Kiwi. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> I'm working at it. I'm going to go watch Flight of the Concords. Okay. If I still can. All right. Thanks, Jacinda. <laughs> Maybe they should be censored. Okay. We got... Whew. A border situation. Whew. We got a whole a whole situation. Yeah. Eagle Pass, which is the yep. small town in Texas on the border where uh, many uh, migrant passages are made. Yes. Uh, you'll remember about a year ago, I think, was the with the many many Haitians under the bridge in Eagle Pass. Uh, that was the last big story out of there. That's but right. But there's always a story. That's where the border patrol and their whips. Was that, that Eagle Pass that, too? Uh, maybe I don't know, but it was with the Haitians. So uh, the mayor of Eagle Pass, Texas. I'm kidding about the whips. Yes, it was. Thank you. That was, that was debunked. I don't want to get that a fact was, check. That was missing. I don't want to get a fact check. Uh, the mayor of Eagle Pass, Texas, signed an emergency declaration after thousands of migrants crossed into the border town. Eagle Pass is accustomed to regular migration since the city of under 30,000 became one of the most heavily crossed areas across the U.S.-Mexico border in recent years. However, the number of people crossing over the last couple of days, which the Texas Department of Public Safety places at more than 4,000, has overwhelmed the city's local police and fire departments, according to Mayor Rolando Salinas, Jr. The emergency declaration grants us the ability to request financial resources to provide additional services caused by the influx of undocumented immigrants, Salinas wrote. In Wednesday's emergency declaration, I don't know how these towns are subsisting at all. Right. You get the feeling that the governors and mayors, mayors of big cities and governors of these big blue states, whether it be California, Illinois, New York. Sanctuary cities. Sanctuary and cities. States, I think they're, and they're states, termed. Yes, in cities that they, they must think that, well, Texas is so big, they can just all roam around there. Right. But- Oh, and Texas can, you know, they can handle it. It's a big state, but they're not thinking at the level of town or city. And I think only for the first time I came across a comment by a blue uh, city uh, mayor. And uh, I forget which one, but the mayor had mentioned that uh, what what's happening to these small towns is now happening in our cities, right? Mm-hmm. In other words... Would you Maybe look at that? Maybe they're beginning to realize, and rather than thinking, well, I mean, sure, 7,000 crossing into Texas is, uh, is a big deal, but, you know, it's a big state. But when you think about each of these in Eagle Pass or uh, Del Rio or Laredo or wherever, uh, Brownsville, it's overwhelming because you yeah. have small towns. Where do they sleep? What do they eat? Where do they go to the bathroom? Right. I mean, like, are they just, you know, how are they sheltered? And uh, how many of these hundreds of thousands of children now who have entered in and some of which, you know, ended up working in uh, doing child labor. Yeah, and indentured servitude. Yes. And this, and this is, I think, and this is, I mentioned Susan Rice earlier. I think that was the reason because she had been responsible for that snafu. But I, can, I keep thinking about two things. One, uh, the remain in Mexico policy. Right. And when it ended, there was a lot of uh, a lot of coverage of, hey, that anticipated influx that everyone was trying to get, the Republicans were going to, you know, fear monger us with, that didn't happen. Everything is fine. And we had mentioned before that, you know, you give this time, eventually there's just no yes. rush, but now they're here. That's yeah. the first thing. And well, the, and it's all yeah. it's all seemingly designed to exacerbate the problem. Yeah. Uh, did you see the idea floated a week ago? I don't know if we mentioned it on the podcast, but the Biden administration sort of floated the idea of like, is there a way we could protect the the northern border of Texas so that these immigrants don't go into the Again, blue states? to and keep them into no, Texas and make it Texas's problem. They finally found a border they wanted right. to enforce, and yeah. it was the northern yeah. Texas That's border. Amazing. That's that is a wild idea. That is a real amazing. thing floated by the administration. Eric but, Adams, by the way, the mayor, the mayor of New York City, you know, yes, he's been blaming the Biden administration, and yes, he's at loggerheads with Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York. Right. He also referred to the crazy governor of Texas for sending them up here. (laughs) Amazing. Uh, Speaking of incentivizing, the Biden administration on Wednesday announced that it will be offering hundreds of thousands of Venezuelan migrants already in the U.S., including those Mm -hmm. in the country illegally, work permits and protections from deportations, just as numbers are skyrocketing at the southern border. Officials announced a move to redesignate Venezuela for temporary protected status, which allows migrants to apply for deportation protections and work permits if they have arrived 
for a certain date. Um, every single change in policy seems designed to increase the numbers. Make things worse. Exacerbate. Yes. Uh, not only that, but I remember Biden giving a speech about the border and talking about how CPB1 was going to, uh, CBP1 was going to solve all of our problems. You get the app, then you can apply normally. Everything is fine. They're still coming in, and many of them are coming in unchecked. Uh, and I keep on also thinking about uh, folks like AOC. Do you remember during the Trump years, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez went down. Oh, is down. she not down there standing she in a white what, what, suit that, crying? Well, that's right. You yeah. remember? At the fence, in tears for the photo op. Yes. Uh, you're talking about all these children, uh, many of whom, as we mentioned, uh, in child labor. You're talking about uh, people living in, in, in terrible conditions. You don't hear much. Where's well, the crying? Where are the tears? I remember at that time telling people, sometimes on CNN, mm -hmm. look, just the resources being overwhelmed is part of this story, right? right? You Look, government agencies aren't great at handling things to begin with, right. and then you get this incredible influx, and so things... So, that's part of it. But as a result, if you're incentivizing all those people to come, you are helping to create mm -hmm. the lack of resources. You are helping to create a humanitarian crisis, no matter how much you believe that open borders are mm -hmm. the answer to all of our problems. Mm -hmm. uh, you're causing a real problem. By the way, this this whole thing and the, the incredible increases that seem almost deliberate, uh, that's how you turn a former immigration squish like mm -hmm. me yeah. into an immigration hawk. Right. And I, like... I'm still a person who thinks that we are enriched by different people coming to this country. I do not think we are enriched by chaos that then causes right. this. By the way, there's a, some leaked images. Also, I just saw this come up on my uh, mm -hmm. on my computer from Fox News, uh, who does have very good uh, border reporters, by the way. Oh, sure. Um, that uh, of new ICE IDs for people who are awaiting their court dates within the U.S. I'm sure that'll work. That will have photograph, biographic identifiers, and cutting-edge security features. So now we're just we're handing out ideas, IDs, too. I don't know, man. I don't know. This can't help Biden going into an election year. I just... One I would don't... not think. Yeah. One would not think. Uh, can we end on something? Gross? Yes. Please, Mary Catherine. <laughs> Elaborate. Gosh, we for have us, to talk about this. I saw this and I thought to someone, well, maybe she lost it like in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a crevice or something or in a nope. cubby hole. Okay, explain. Okay, here we go. This is Michigan, swing state, by the way. So this mm. is a, this is a voter you yeah. want to woo. Yeah, a bellwether. Yeah. A woman in Michigan was rescued on Tuesday after getting stuck in an outhouse while trying to retrieve her Apple Watch, forcing police to remind people not to climb inside of toilets. So that's a warning we now need. The incident happened about 11 a.m. inside an outhouse bathroom at Dixon Lake, Michigan State Police said Wednesday in a statement. The woman was heard yelling for help and told first responders she had dropped her Apple Watch in the toilet. She then lowered herself inside the toilet to retrieve it and could not get out, state police said. Conservation officers from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, heroes, troopers with the state police, Gaylord Post, and emergency medical personnel, with the local county, responded to the incident. The toilet was removed and a strap was used to hoist the woman out to safety. It's like baby Jessica in the well. What's happening? That the is agency, no well. The agency added that venturing inside an outhouse toilet is usually not a good idea and warned against it. If you lose an item in an outhouse toilet, do not attempt to venture inside the containment area. Serious injury may occur. Vic. How much are you saying goodbye to that Apple Watch and never <laughs> venturing near okay, this so predicament? I, I don't own an Apple Watch. I know people who do. Well, so good, because you could end up in this situation. Yeah, if it's that good. I mean, what 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 is the watch? Is it like a Jetsons watch? Get smart. You can use it for your phone. Can you talk? It's basically a you phone on your wrist. Can you yes. watch movies on the phone? I mean, no, but you can get you get messages. Messages and I, I, I bet it does. Uh, your vitals? Does it? Take she didn't want to. She didn't want to miss out on her steps that day. Unless I guess maybe it was steps. Okay, or the scuba diving. I she can was only. Going for. I can think of only one similar incident to this, for and you. that was uh, no, not for me. Okay, uh, that was you uh, and McGregor in Train Spotting, and he climbs into the toilet. But I believe he was trying to retrieve heroin, so slightly different needs. 
to put it that way. Look, I think I'm on the record uh, that I'm a cheap lady. Okay. Don't take that out of context. Um, (laughs) I'm a cheapskate. Yeah. If I dropped a very expensive watch into a toilet, it would be bye bye wow watch yeah like i just can't it's not like the watch in pulp fiction you know i wouldn't do that you know the (laughs) watch where exactly yeah exactly it is not that kind of watch yeah this is not an heirloom no you can get another apple watch tomorrow even if it were i'm telling you it's a tragedy it is a tragedy yes but this is you would only do this if a murderer was chasing you and the only way to hide was to hide there and even then tough call not for an apple watch not for an Apple Watch. Uh, I am not. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm. I'm not going to say I'm uh, Howard Hughes level a clean freak. Well, even though he was not a clean freak in the weird way in the end, as we all know, he was like the reverse. But uh, Porta John is just not my thing. Okay, and I've done it at concerts. Yeah, got to use it. You know what? In and out. Hold your breath. Don't touch anything. We're talking Shawshank level here. Yeah. Like what yeah. she did this is in Im- getting stuck. Immersion. Just, no, this is an immersion in, in situation. That, uh, there and it, if you're lucky, there is a blue the, that solution, and maybe the One solution is, is, and maybe it was right after they changed it out. But something tells me. And even if you're going to emerge from this, right? Mm-hmm. Say you've got a plan, and you don't have to be hoisted out by local law enforcement. Aren't you going to come out blue? People are going to know, either by sight or smell, that something went down. <laughs> smell, the. Uh, Years ago, the Washington Post did a great write-up of uh, people with tough jobs that you would not want, but they do, right? And so they talk to, for example, medical examiners. The micro beat. Like yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and one of them was uh, a, li- a, a lifelong uh, Portage on maintenance worker. And one of the questions they asked was, what was your toughest day? And you know what he said? 1976 Bicentennial National Mall. Oh. The way I believe the quote he said was, "That was tough. Yeah. That was tough." Marking America's greatness. Yeah. No. I mean, 200 you know, years in, a lot of, in some 70s. very serious oh, ways. Man. Yeah. I mean, so you got to give know, up. God on bless that him. Watch. God bless him and the no, people who do that work do and that the people work. who they need to uh, pay more. Who rescued this woman? And it just goes to show you should be a trained professional to do this kind of thing. And on that note, that wraps up this episode of Getting Hammered. Remember, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Of course, obviously, we're on YouTube. And you can follow uh, me on Twitter at Victorino Mattis. I'm at MK Hammer on Twitter, at MK Hammer Time on Instagram. Um, oh, I also wrote on Substack about the anniversary of uh, my husband's passing and uh, a little bit of a, it's a sad read. So just if you're not into that, watch out. Uh, that's a bit of a content warning for you guys. Uh, you can find us at Getting Hammered Podcast on Instagram or YouTube. And you can see our bright, friendly faces and this beautiful vintage TV between us, which is really one of my favorite possessions now um thanks for getting hammered responsibly this has been a nebulous media podcast